Have you ever been betrayed by a friend or deeply hurt by someone you loved? And if you had a choice, would you rather forgive and forget or never let it go? Well, today's guest is going to help us to be able to look at the art and science of forgiveness and also debunk some of the wildly held myths on how much payback may be costing you. Welcome to Haviland Friends. I'm your host, Haviland Malone, and every week I bring you inside my amazing world of mindfulness teachers, inspirational speakers, business experts, celebrities, and so much more to have the conversations that matter to you. And today's guest is the Executive Director of Empowerment Through Arts, which is dedicated to united, uniting the emerging science and psychology with the arts. She is also an educator and artist who sits on the Lieutenant Governor's Music Commission Advisory Board for Louisiana. And you may have even seen her on season two of American Idol. Please welcome my friend, Misty Marshall. Hey, Misty. Hey, Havila and friends. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all of our amazing friends and viewers who are tuning in right now. And, you know, you have dedicated your life to being able to use entertainment and use art to be able to help people to grow and to heal. And, you know, sometimes people have gone through some really significant things in their life, you know, like significant hurts and pains, or even small slights, you know, you stole my boyfriend, you, you know, you stole an idea for a business venture, you, you know, you abandoned me as a child, you know, so many things. And so why would we want to, like, let that stuff go? Mm. <laughs> why would you want to hang on to all that stuff is a better question. Mm. And, and so many of us, are. I really didn't realize how many of us are until I started this forgiveness journey. And that's when I realized how many of us need healing, not because we're broken people, not, but just because we are people living this life experience. It's rough out there. And forgiveness is something that usually takes work if it's something that is deep-seated or something that's more than a slight, I stepped on your foot and I'm sorry. When there's something that involves more levels than that, um, then there's forgiveness work to do. And it's something that, like you said, it's a choice, a deliberate release of wrongdoing so that you're not carrying the weight of that as you move forward in your life and your relationships with others and yourself. And why did this become, or this piece around forgiveness, and you're right, there's so many things that we are all healing from, that we are dealing with in our lives, that affect every aspect of our lives. And so why did this particular piece become so important to you to be able to pursue tools for helping not only yourself, but others? Well, that's a great question. So in my business empowerment through arts, I use arts as a vehicle. And usually we bring together psychologists, counselors, healers, meditation guides, local other artists and, and kind of compile and forum into workshops and events and showcases, shows. And Throughout this process, I've been growing and growing. And as I work with artists and even go into the community and work with people who aren't artists, but we use the arts as a vehicle to get to more deep seated things, the more this comes up as the foundation of so many other things. And so I had this very interesting story. I was at a party several years ago, eight years ago to be exact, and I was carrying a lot of burden and weight that I kind of knew about and I was kind of working through. But after the party, there were a few women who stuck around to hang out and help tidy up. And this woman approached me, she was dressed in these bright colored fabrics and had her hair wrapped. And she said, um, you know, I, I have these, I get feelings from people and I'd like to share something with you if you don't mind. And I said, hold up, look. Okay, you know, I take this stuff with a grain of salt. You know, it's if 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 I can engage and I choose to, then I say, well, let me hear it, you know, and I'll take it or leave it. 
but what she said, I decided to take, and uh, and and it, it's it's been a, a blessing. She told me that um, to close my eyes and imagine myself standing on on a mountain, on the apex of a mountain, and before me was were several paths, but the path that helped me fulfill my greatest purpose. I needed the tools. I wasn't ready for it to choose that path. Um, she was telling me that my greatest purpose is very great and uh, had so many rewards. But in order to make that choice, I had to first do something. So she said, turn around in my mind's eye. I turned around and she said, that is your past. And there are mountains and canyons there are triumphs and treasures and all the good, the bad, and the ugly of everywhere you've ever been. And I need you to bless it. And then you can turn around and move forward. Mm. I started cracking up laughing at all at this moment because I said, whoo, girl, you don't know me, you know? And I said, I, there are places unworthy of blessing in my past uh thanks <laughs> you know but i can give blessings to some and i'll just keep on moving you know uh and she said okay you know um and so she said if you don't if you don't heal what cut you you will bleed on yourself and others who did not hurt you mm. And that was powerful. And I knew she was right. And I knew I couldn't crack any more jokes. Um, and I said, this sounds like, this sounds like in a process. This sounds like it's going to be a process, not an event. Um, and I'm open to it, you know? And so I thanked her. I've never seen her since. And, um, and it's amazing once I said, I'm open to this, what has been happening ever since then? You know, um, now I'm getting asked to give speeches on the topic. Um, I've been asked to be here with you. So it's just truly incredible. And I felt like, um, you know, this is all kind of happening as part of, in a way, me as an artist, because as an artist, I see myself as a vessel. Um, and a, a vessel for humanity. That's what I pray to be, you know, a vessel to use arts so that we can all connect and become more empathetic people and connect to these narratives that are gonna project us more, you know, forward as, as, a, as a race, as a human race and, and, and just personally in our own lives and homes. Absolutely, and I love that you use that um, uh, imagery of being a vessel. Because when you're a vessel, that means that you can hold things and that there's things that can come out of or things that can be poured out of you. And so when we talk about a vessel that holds things, if you have a lot of pain, regret, hurt, shame, guilt inside of this vessel, that's energy that is being compiled in there and affects everything that comes out of the vessel. So it yes. affects how you show up in the world. And so when we talk about forgiveness, I want to, you know, explore, first of all, what is forgiveness? And also, what is it not? Because I think there's a lot of like wildly held concepts about forgiveness, which is why people are like, I'm not forgiving you right. for hurting me in that way. I'm not letting that go because that means I'm giving giving you permission to continue to do it. But so, so what is forgiveness? And then what is it not? Right. This is a great, great question because we commonly enmesh forgiveness and reconciliation and they are two different things. They can go together. They don't need to, they are different. Forgiveness on its own is all about you. It's all about visiting the event in a safe space, naming it with clarity as much as you can, naming 
writing it down, because sometimes we say, oh, I've thought about it, but it's interesting when you think and when you actually go to speak, you have to write it down, you have to name it with clarity and as much about that event as you can. What would people say about it if they knew? What's the worst case scenario? Follow it all the way through. What have been the impacts, whether they've been monetary or time or a worldview? I don't trust anyone anymore. All men are bad. Whatever the case is, write everything down. You have to clarify it first. And then you have to say, I'm open to the process of forgiving and you have to really pursue that because time does not heal all wounds. You can grow up to be an old fool or old and wise. And I see them both around, around <laughs> time, right? So we're gonna choose who we, who we become and it's a becoming every day. And forgiveness has to be part of a self-care practice. It's something that is, is ongoing. And it's something that we don't always know what it will look like in the future. Just like when you're on a path and you see a building way off in the future and you go, oh, wow, that building looks, you know, like it has, uh, you know, just it's a square and uh, it's gray and not too big. And, and then you get halfway down the path and you go, wait, it has some rounded edges. And, oh, I thought it was made out of this material, but it, it's actually this texture. And then you get closer and, wow, it looks so different. It's, it's different than I thought it would look. It's, the perspective has changed each way along the path. So sometimes when you get to the end of forgiveness, it doesn't even look the way it used to. So forgiveness is a process. Forgiveness is something that does not require an apology or an acknowledgement from the other person. Again, like reconciliation, that is separate. You mentioned in the beginning a phrase we often use, forgive and forget. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is never about forgetting. Forgive and remember for goodness sake to grow. Now that doesn't mean if, it, so if you choose to reconcile, then you should choose new healthy dynamics in your relationship with that person, right? And so there will be a, there will be maybe new healthy boundaries with that person if you choose to reconcile. So moving forward, you're both clear on what that is. You forgive and remember, and hopefully that person will grow from, from that communication. And if you choose not to reconcile, you still don't forgive and forget because what happens when we don't forgive is we lose trust in ourselves. Like earlier when I was saying you get burned so many times in a relationship, um, you, I've heard women say, all men are pigs, or all men are dogs, or all men are bad. And then we start attracting that to ourselves because we're not in flow, we're not in trust that when we see someone who has values, we can decipher that because we're, we haven't forgiven our choices. And so we're thinking, I choose, you know, it, it's, it robs you of your potential and it robs you of your trust and it robs you of what we need to hear the most, which is our instincts, where all of our great decisions come from in our guts. If we haven't done the healing work, we have blockages there. Yes. So, you talk about trauma, like robbing you of your trust, trauma robbing and, and not being able to deal with that, heal from it and let that you know, go uh, through that forgiveness process. And I love that the clarity on forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness isn't even about the other person. It's about you being able to pour that energy out of your vessel, letting that go so it no longer affects everything else that's going on in your life. And I know for me personally, you know, someone who has dealt with, you know, child sexual trauma, and dealing with that, it created so much mistrust in other people, in mm. relationships, and you know, even not trusting my own judgment about things, which made me hold back in so many areas in my life. And it wasn't until being able to deal with that, even forgiving and, and letting that go, and, and it's an ongoing process. Like, it's not just like, oh, okay, like poof, and with the magic wand, you're all good, but it's an ongoing healing process. But that did start with 
forgiveness. And even when I like shared, you know, like it confronted that person and had that conversation, you know, I said, I was like, this forgive me, like, it's not about you. Like, it's not even for you. Like, this is for me. And, and there was so much power in that for me to do that. And, and I want you to talk a little bit about, you know, cause we always have a choice. We have a choice to be able to forgive and to, to be able to move on in our life. And we have a choice to be able to hold on to things, maybe because we think it's going to protect us, maybe because we think it's going to, you know, I just don't want to forget about this so it doesn't happen again. So we can choose to hold on to it. But what are some of the effects of not forgiving? Wow. Um, you're right. You know, we so often hold on to not forgiving for protection because it's, it's really safe to see things in black and white, good and evil. You know, sometimes we get in with the arts and do this work. As an actor, I have to play a, a, a saint and then a murderer. And what does that mean? I go back to nature and nurture. Um, and so, which, which basically means how we're genetically coded and, and neurologically set and how we are, meets how we are raised. Um, what happens when you don't, so what happens when you go through a really tough event, a traumatic event, is that uh, a part in our brain called the amygdala sets into this mode called fight or flight. And a lot of things start to trigger with the sympathetic nervous system, including hormones getting released, uh, you're, you're getting adrenaline and cortisol, and, and this is because something's about to go down. Uh, it could be that you're about to be abused as a child, or it could be that you uh, see something scary, a, a parent using drugs or, you know, different things that we experience that different people, different ones of us really go through. And so when we go through this, our pupils dilate, our bronchioles get big because our bodies like get ready. You know, so we are oxygenating, we, our blood is pumping, we're taking in everything. And it's good if we're in a stressful situation and we gotta get out of there. But it's terrible if it happens every night and you don't know what's gonna come through that door as a child or what's gonna happen. And so over time, rather than your body being able to heal itself so that you can deal, you can have a, a powerful immune system when you get exposed to this and that, your body's ready. But if your body is weakened by this happening, it's not ready. And over time, you will get sick. Even if we remove the, the subject, right? Let's say that person who is causing this trauma is gone and out of your life. Whoa, what we found, what science has shown us is that we relive the exact same stuff when we think about it. So for some of us, going back to that event, for a war veteran, for someone who's molested and hadn't done the forgiveness work, for someone even within, within their own selves who've done something that's harmed someone, every time you do that, you're doing this to your body, flooding, creating this, creating this, creating this, over time to your sympathetic nervous system, which is the gas pedal the gas pedal on your, on, and so what do you do? Again, it goes back to forgiveness being a choice. You have to say, you have to put on the brakes and you have to start to seek what works for you. I am such an advocate for professor, professional counseling. I love that. But I also study sound therapy. I study Qigong. I study yoga. I mean, there, those are things that work for me. There are many, many, you know, I encourage all of your viewers to start your forgiveness work today. You know what, you know what someone gave me when they heard I was on this journey? Someone very special to me gave me this. It's, it's a rock. And uh, he said, he said, somebody gave this to me and forgiveness rocks. And I've been, yes. I've been carrying it around for eight months. I put I... it in my purse. I put it on my nightstand. And one day it's going to go in the garden or pay it forward. But right now I'm carrying my weight. It's a reminder. And I love that to have an anchor to be able to help. And like you said, like this choice about forgiving because we can be in this heightened state of fight or flight 
for our entire lives and, and, and really blow out our adrenals and, and have so many health issues in relationship to that, trust issues in relation to it, you know, playing small in life relating to it, or we Great can start- of stroke, cardiovascular, <laughs> weight gain, on and on and on and on and on. Or, or we can start the process because it is a process of forgiveness and healing. And so I just want you to share maybe just a couple tools that maybe people can use to start their process. And I love that you have the anchor of the forgiveness rock because forgiveness rocks, like what a great mnemonic device to be able Hashtag to- Hashtag forgiveness rocks, right? <laughs> let's start a movement and let's all start the process. Uh, the world needs healing and starting here, right here. Um, you, you have to name it. You have to write it down. You don't have to go to the person. In fact, in the first step of the process, I would not. If you choose to down the road, you choose to. And, and then you can work on reconciliation. But if you don't, you don't have to. But write it all down. And if you need to get rid of that after you've written it down, then throw it in the water, burn it, rip it up, or not, or keep it. It's, it's, it's really your journey. I can't tell you how to take it. I, I will tell you, you have to name it with clarity. I will tell you, you have to show up as a practice. It's like exercise. It's like people, people you don't exercise once and say, now I'm fit. You don't go to church once and say, or read your, read your holy manual, Bible or Quran or whatever you're reading and say, now I have religion. You continue to show up because life continually is moving and you have to continually show up. Forgiveness work can change. If you were molested as a child, you might do the healing work and then you get to maybe um, a, a, a young person, a young adult, and you're you're um, experiencing your first sexual relationship and you have to return to your forgiveness work. And then later you, you've got that under control and you think, check, done. But then you have a child and all these things can come up again. And so it's not, this is important. When this happens, you're not back to square one mm -hmm. in your journey you have just experienced a setback. So if you're going a thousand, the journey of a thousand miles and you start with step one and you're right here, you're never gonna go all the way back to here. If you're right here, you can just have a little setback and be okay with yourself. Another place to start is to say, I'm okay with my feelings. We are often taught you should not be angry. You should, for me, a lot of my forgiveness work was, I was taught, but I, I don't want to be like this. I want to be forgiving and loving. And, you know, I just want to love and, for, I, and, and I'm supposed to do this. And it wasn't until I gave myself permission to be angry and to grieve and go through those things. Now, feeling it and acting out on it are two different things. You know, I don't go, punch a hole in the wall, but they're, they're healthy ways to be angry. And I utilized those and I went, I allowed myself to feel them. And then I could start building a foundation made of something other than sand. Mm. And I would way rather have one day into my process of something to stand on than 20 years of building a castle made of sand that's going to wash away as soon as the first wind blows or, or wave comes that's stronger. I love that you can create a foundation of forgiveness that will build the bricks <laughs> to your empire, or you can sit in the pain and the hurt and build that castle of sand and with the strong wind or water comes and it'll all wash away. And so we always have a choice to be able to forgive and heal or to be able to hold on. And so it's up to you, the choice that you'll make. And so I'm so glad that you were able to come on today to share with us about this forgiveness process because it is so important. Like you said, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. So either writing that down, speaking it out, getting professional help, whatever is necessary for you to live your best life, you should do it. And so tell people how they can get in contact with you to learn more about um, this process. Sure. Thank you, Havali. You can find me on all social media 
as Misty Marshall with two L's or follow Empowerment Through Arts. That's Empowerment Through T-H-R-U-A-R-T-S. And we're on all the platforms and websites. Awesome. Thank you so much, Missy, for joining us today. Thank and we you. know mm, when we share our stories, we get to live, to learn, and love a little bit more. And it's your time to be proof of what's possible. I want to thank you so much for joining us for today's episode of Haviland Friends. I'm your host, Haviland Malone. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel for new episodes and like us on Facebook. And we can't wait to see you next week.